On today's show, we are looking at the Seed Studio Recomputer Jetson-10. This is a Jetson Nano module installed on a Seed Studio carrier board, placed into an aluminum case. Jetpack 4.6 is pre-installed. All you have to do is hook up the Jetson, answer the usual startup configuration questions, then you are up and running. Let's take it out the box. I like the packaging on this. Here is the recomputer with the wall wart and a wide variety of wall adapters. Let's take a look at the recomputer. Here's the front panel. Here's the side panel. There are some access holes here. Ooh, this side has rubber feet, so you can set it vertically. And underneath we have some screw holes in case you want to attach your recomputer to a project. There are currently four models in the Jetson recomputer lineup. The entry-level A0 uses a carrier board similar to that of the Jetson Nano 2GB developer kit. The other models use the C Jetson A206 carrier board, which is similar to the NVIDIA Jetson Xavier NX developer kit. Today we are reviewing the Jetson 10 1 HO, which Seed provided for review purposes. However, this is not a paid advertisement. The review unit has a NVIDIA Jetson Nano production module installed. As a reminder, this is a 4 core A53 ARM CPU, a 128 core GPU, 4 gigabytes of main memory, and in contrast to the developer kit, we have 16 gigabytes of eMMC memory instead of an SD card reader. Let's take a closer look at the I.O. panel, barrel jack power input, display port and HDMI output, four USB 3.0 type A ports, Ethernet RJ45 jack, and a micro USB 2.0 jack. The top cover is held in place with magnets. It has a secret release. Let's look inside. There's the carrier board. Now I'll put the wall plug on the power adapter. Good to go. It only takes a few minutes to set up your Jetson recomputer and get it up and running. In this video, we are going to take the recomputer apart and compare it to a Jetson Nano developer kit. If you are planning on using your recomputer as a desktop replacement or a game machine, check out ETA Prime's excellent video on the subject. I will leave a link in the description below. Let's take a closer look at the carrier board. There are four screws that hold the carrier board to the case. Let's remove those screws. And now we can remove the carrier board. Make sure that the heat sink is cool before handling the board. On the underside of the board, we have an M.2 key M slot, a battery holder for the real-time clock, there is a M.2 key E slot. However, it is disabled when using the Jetson Nano module. Plan on using a USB wireless dongle. In the unit that I received, there was no retaining screw for the M.2 key M slot. This appears to be meant for a M.2 screw. However, one of the options is to have a add-on NVMe SSD pre-installed. In comparing the NVIDIA Jetson Nano Developer Kit with the C Jetson A206 carrier board, we can see a few differences. The dev kit runs on five volts on either the micro USB or the barrel jack. You can also use the PoE connector to power the dev kit. The A206 does not have that capability. A major difference is that on the Jetson A206, it requires a nine to 19 volt input on the power jack. Turning the boards over, we can see the A206 has a battery holder for the real-time clock, whereas on the dev board, that's unpopulated. As we mentioned before, the Jetson A206 has an M.2 key M slot and a disabled M.2 key E slot. The Jetson dev kit has an M.2 key E slot underneath the Jetson module, which you can use to add a wireless card. Let's reinstall the Jetson A206 back into its case. We'll reinstall the four screws. Now let's remove the Jetson module. There are two screws which secure the module to the carrier board. 
Let's remove those screws. There are two retaining clips on the side of the module. You can use your thumbs to release the clips. Then we can remove the Jetson Nano module from the connector. Here is the underside of the Jetson Nano production module. This is a Jetson Nano production module. That means in this case that the SD card on the Jetson development kit is replaced by a 16 gigabyte eMMC. The J14 header is exposed. There is a header for CAN bus signals. However, this header is not enabled for the Jetson Nano. Here's a close-up of the J14 header. You may need to use this header if you're flashing the Jetson from the SDK manager. In particular, you will need to know where the force recovery and ground pins are. As stated previously, the CAN header is disabled on the Jetson Nano versions. On models equipped with the Jetson Xavier NX module, this header is enabled. To reinstall, insert the module into the connector at a slight angle. Once the module is seated, press down. This will engage the retaining clips. Then we reinstall the two retaining screws. While the case is open, let's install a couple of Raspberry Pi CSI cameras. The tape should be oriented facing away from the module. Gently lift up on the CSI camera connector. You might want to remove the board from the case to do this. Then insert the ribbon cable into the connector. Then gently press on the cable retainer until you feel it click in place. Installation complete. Let's hook up our Jetson Recomputer, Ethernet, mouse, keyboard, monitor. Now let's plug the power in. Let's switch over to a screencast. Now we start the standard OEM config. I accept the terms of this license, sealing my fate. English, please. Then the rest of the usual questions. Then after a couple of minutes and logging in, we're home. Let's take a look at the system stats. Ubuntu 18.04, four gigabytes of memory, and 14.7 gigabytes for the root FS. I loaded up Jetson Utilities from the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub. Here's some of the libraries that Jetpack loads up. L4T 32.6.1, Jetpack 4.6. Then we have CUDA, OpenCV, CUDNN, TensorRT, VisionWorks, VPI, and Vulkan. I've attached four cameras to the Jetson Nano recomputer. There are two Raspberry Pi CSI type cameras, a Logitech webcam, and a 4K Find Solutions 4K Thea camera. From the Jetson Hacks repository on GitHub, I have loaded up the repository camera-caps. We can see one of the Raspberry Pi CSI cameras on video zero. It's a 10-bit Bayer camera. Let's run it at 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second. Let me switch mics. There I am. Hello. Let's open up another camera. It's another CSI camera. Let's run it 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second. And there it is. Camera number three. Let's open it up at 1920 by 1080. It's a 4K camera. It's equivalent to like a camera phone iPhone 12 or so. Let's open that up. And finally, we have our Logitech webcam. Our trusty old webcam here. 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second. And I have no idea which camera I should be looking at. The Logitech and the Thea cam are both autofocus. Let's take a look at the webcam first. Take a look at a Jetson NX developer kit. See how close we can get. You can see it hunt a little bit. You can see that it's hunting. 
This is all ambient light. You can see it takes a little while to get the autofocus back to my face. That may or may not be a good thing in your opinion. Let's take a look at the Thea cam. You can see it's much quicker. This is in 1920 by 1080 mode. You can see that it focused a lot quicker. Let's change that to 4K mode. These are not great lighting conditions. It's probably typical what you'd find late afternoon in a room. Since it is, let's change the resolution. Okay, so now we notice it's a little bit slow in comparison to the other cameras. Try that again. A little bit laggy. Now we could turn off the other cameras and get better performance. But what we want to look at is the clarity on here. You see that we get a little bit of tearing, but the picture is a lot better. Right here, we're about an inch and a half away. And it refocuses pretty quickly. For the CSI cameras, it does not have autofocus, so you have to manually adjust the focus ring. But that gives you an idea of what the picture quality is. So you need more light, just a smaller sensor all around. So there you have it, the Seed Studio Recomputer featuring the Jetson Nano, a full plug and play development system. Hey, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.